I want to talk about making halohydrins from alkenes. Halohydrins are bromohydrins or chlorohydrins, depending on the exact halogen we talk about. In these examples, I'll use bromine, but what I say here applies to the use of chlorine as well. And the formation of a bromohydrin from an alkene involves addition of bromine to one carbon and a hydroxyl group to the adjacent carbon. Because this bears great similarity to the addition of bromine to an alkene, let's take a quick look at that. Take a look at the addition of bromine to cyclohexene. This is a stereoselective reaction. It only forms the trans isomer, and that stereoselectivity is a result of the reaction mechanism. The addition of the two bromine atoms must be anti. Now take a look what happens when we add bromine to an alkene, but water is present as well. We add bromine to one carbon, but the other alkene carbon adds a hydroxyl group. And notice, again, there's a trans relationship between the two groups that have added to the alkene carbons. Again, we've seen anti-addition, and this reaction is stereoselective. But in this case, we have added two different things to the alkene carbon. So when the alkene isn't symmetrical, there's a question of regioselectivity. With methylcyclohexene, we see that the hydroxyl groups adds exclusively to the carbon that has the methyl group. Again, we can see that the addition has taken place with the anti-stereochemistry. Hydroxyl up and the bromine down. So now we see that the reaction is stereoselective, anti-addition, no stereoisomer is formed, only trans, and the reaction is regioselective. The hydroxyl adds to the carbon having a greater number of alkyl groups, as I've shown here. We can understand both the stereoselectivity and the regioselectivity by looking at the mechanism of this reaction. I want to look at a simple case so we can focus on the regioselectivity. Isobutylene is treated with bromine together with water. The hydroxyl adds, as we expect, on the more substituted carbon, and the bromine on the less substituted carbon. To look at the reaction mechanism, I'm going to turn that alkene on its side. You might remember from the video on the addition of bromine to an alkene, when the bromine molecule approaches the pi bond, it's polarized, and the bromine atom closest to the pi bond becomes an electrophile. The pi electrons are used to form a sigma bond with bromine, and this pair of electrons stays with this bromine atom to make bromide. When we make a halohydrin, in the second step, water adds to this bromonium ion. Water, as a nucleophile, must approach from the bottom side because the bromine is already on the top side. But it could add to either this carbon, which has two alkyl groups, or this carbon, which has none. To explain why water adds to the more substituted carbon, Take a look at the two possible transition states. First, the transition state that leads to the product that's actually formed. Water adds to this carbon as a nucleophile because it has a partial positive charge. It has a partial positive charge because the bromine carbon bond is already breaking. The electrons on the water as a nucleophile are drawn to that partial positive charge. So in the transition state, there's a significant positive charge on the carbon atom. The alternative is to put a significant positive charge on the other carbon atom. Again, the water is beginning to form a bond because the carbon has a partial positive charge. The carbon-bromine bond is partially broken. The difference between these two is significant. This is a primary carbon, and this is a tertiary carbon. We know that alkyl groups stabilize positive charge because we've seen it when we talked about carbocations. So this transition state will be more stable because the alkyl groups attached to that carbon are stabilizing the partial positive charge. It turns out that this is enough more stable so it directs completely the regioselectivity. We can rule out this transition state entirely and the water as a nucleophile adds only to the more substituted carbon. This means that the bromine ends up on the less substituted carbon. So to complete description of the mechanism, the water adds to this carbon as this carbon-bromine bond is breaking. Because this is a neutral nucleophile, it ends up with a positive charge on the oxygen. And in a final step, a water molecule removes the proton from this protonated hydroxyl group. This halohydrin is formed with complete regioselectivity. Now let's take a look at an alkene where we can talk about the stereochemistry of this addition. When this alkene is treated with bromine and water, 
that makes two stereoisomers a paraffin antimers. We're starting with the Z alkene, and we make equal amounts of the enantiomers, a racemic mixture. The stereochemistry at these two centers are SS and RR. To explain why only two stereoisomers are formed, we need to look at the intermediate. I've turned this alkene on its side so we can better see the pi bond, and we can see that bromine can add from the bottom of the pi bond to make this bromonium ion, or from the top of the pi bond to make the bromonium ions on the right. Now it's easy to explain the reducible activity. The hydroxyl group ends up adding to the carbon that has more alkyl groups. And it's also easy to see why we have the stereochemical outcome that we do. In the next step, water adds as a nucleophile, and it must add from the back side. So water must add at this carbon, and it must add from this side. The stereochemistry is fixed, as I've shown up above. And when water adds to this bromonium ion, it must add to this carbon and from this side, leading to the stereochemistry that I've shown on the right. The stereochemistry of these products is dictated both by the stereochemistry of the reactant and the reaction mechanism. The hydroxyl group as a nucleophile must add from the back side, what we call anti-addition. Now take a look at the alkene that has the E stereochemistry. The regular selectivity is the same as we would expect, but the stereochemistry is different. This E stereochemistry leads to a different pair of enantiomers. Again, this is easy to explain by looking at the bromonium ion intermediate. The bromine adds from the bottom to form the intermediate on the left. The bromine adds from the top to form the intermediate on the right. When water adds to the intermediate on the left, it comes from the back side, leading to the stereochemistry that you see up above. And when water adds to the intermediate shown on the right, it comes from the back side, leading to the stereochemistry that you see above it. So again, the stereochemistry of the alkene and the anti-addition required by the reaction mechanism dictate the stereochemistry. Only two enantiomers of four possible stereoisomers are formed. A reaction is called stereospecific when the stereochemistry of the products are dictated by the stereochemistries of the starting alkenes, as we see in this case. The Z alkene leads to one pair of enantiomers. The E alkene leads to a second pair of enantiomers. So, in summary, the take-home message is that the formation of halohydrons is highly regioselective. The hydroxyl group adds to the more substituted carbon. And, when the alkenes have E and C stereochemistry, the reaction is stereospecific. And finally, which pair of enantiomers results from each alkene is dictated by the anti-stereochemistry of the reaction mechanism. Halohydrin formation is both regioselective and stereospecific.